Hello, guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Tutorials. Today we're going to be going over another topic, and this is a temporary HP, otherwise known as barriers. <clears throat> barriers are an interesting topic, and um, it's um, there's a lot of misinformation going around about barriers, and I feel like I need to dispel some of it, and we'll talk about that stuff together. Um, let's actually, let me just go ahead and pull up this notepad here. Ah, uh, sorry, I'm a little flustered because uh, last time I tried to record this video, my dog knocked over this green screen and basically destroyed the entire room for no particular reason other than his bone was underneath of the green screen at that particular moment, so he felt he needed to just, like, destroy everything. Collect your thoughts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So number one, barriers seem to snapshot your damage reduction when created. Um, so this is something that uh, doesn't seem to like make it through in a lot of the understandings on how barriers work. Barriers don't get your damage reduction unless your damage redu reduction is active at the time when your barrier is created. This means that a lot of the times barriers end up being garbage because you don't have any damage reduction when the barrier is created. Temerity Pants, in particular, are a very big a proponent of this because they have no damage reduction stats whatsoever on them. If you compare them to a nice pair of, like, quad damage reduction pants that have things like 10.7 damage reduction, 23.7 damage reduction from close, 20.2% damage reduction while enemies are poisoned, 20.2% damage reduction while fortified, and so forth and so on, what you come across is you come across an understanding that the barrier that's being created by Temerity is essentially the same as your HP, and because you don't have any damage reduction, the barrier is basically garbage, because it's, <laughs> it has no damage reduction attached to it. However, barriers do tend to snapshot your damage reduction when created. Which means that if you have a large amount of damage reduction when you create the barrier, the barrier is going to be more useful to you because it will retain that damage reduction until it depletes. Now, most barriers don't last very long. They only last like 10 seconds, or um, in this particular case, uh, I believe it's 8 seconds. Yes, 8 seconds on the Temerity Pants. And so for that particular period of time, if you have one of your defensive buffs up when you cast your Temerity Pants, the barrier that it creates is stronger. And one of the reasons why the Temerity Pants barrier is so bad is because you're giving up four different damage reduction modifiers for this bonus, which is terrible. Um, another myth uh, revolving around barriers is basically this. Um, maximum, maximum HP equipment doesn't affect most barriers. Now, I think there's some barriers for some reason or another that seem to work slightly different than others, but it's been my uh, experience through most of the game that maximum HP does not affect the barrier at all. Um, and a lot of people put in these rubies and they're like so in, you know, sure that the rubies are increasing their barrier. Um, and I hate to tell you, but they're not. Your barrier is not based off of your HP it's based off of your base HP, which is a different number. Um, this does not include any other sources of bonus HP that you might have. So if you have bonus HP, say, on a ring of 538, or if you have bonus HP in the form of a royal ruby, um, these are not going to change the number that you are going to get. Um, in this particular case, I have Temerity Pants, which have a barrier of 76% of my maximum life, right? So my maximum life at the moment is... Um, 2,872, right? So let's pull up a calculator. 2,782 um, minus, and I believe that's what, 24%? So yeah, minus 24%, which is going to get us our barrier total, which should be 2,114.32. Um, I believe I do have other bonus maximum lives, like in the Paragon board and things like that. So this number may not be entirely accurate. In fact, it's probably less than this, but let's find out. So we go outside, we've got our Temerity Pants on, we hit the Q button, which is our potion. The Q button generates the barrier for us, and we have a 1600 barrier, which doesn't seem uh, entirely accurate. So let's tap the potion again. 
2017. That is our barrier. So we have 2017 as our barrier. And let's tap the potion one more time just to make sure. Yes, 2017. So you notice the numbers don't match. The maximum health that I'm getting from other equipment isn't calculating either. So let's go over um, and grab some more potions real quick because I ran out of potions. We're going to take the maximum life equipment. We're going to put that on. And once we put on the maximum life equipment, we're going to go make the barrier again. So I'm going to take my 538 and I'm going to take my two rubies and we're going to put both of those in there. And then we're going to go outside and we're going to cast the potion again. Um, and you're, what you're going to notice is that it doesn't change. It's still 2017. The amount of barrier that Temerity offers is not based off of your bonus life of any type. It is only based off of your maximum life. So you're not going to get any more than what your maximum life gives you. I can hit this potion all day long. I can continue to press this potion. And the barrier will never go above 2017. Which 2017 is the barrier that I have, or the max, the base life, basically, that I have. So 76% of my base life. Which means that the barrier from Temerity is nowhere near as useful as you might think. Now, you can increase the barrier from Temerity utilizing diamonds. Now, that is something that you can do. Um, in fact, all barriers can get barrier generation increase. So if I go to the uh, girl here, and I go ahead and unsocket these, I can throw in a royal diamond. Now, royal diamonds give 5% barrier generation. So if I go back outside of town and I cast my barrier again, what you're going to notice is we're going to have an increased barrier by a, a small margin. Um, I mean, we could probably run it on a calculator just to see how the numbers work. So 2017 plus 5% gives us uh, an additional 100.85 barrier, which is 2117.85, which may round up to 2118. But let's see. So holding our mouse over the, the do jank, Q, Q, and we are still at 2017. So the barrier um, generation here isn't even affecting Temerity. Very interesting. I wonder why that is specifically that the barrier generation is not actually affecting this barrier. Um, this is just another one of the many things that is kind of strange about the way that barriers generate and the way that they work is that not everything seems to be working correctly. I think in this particular case, with Temerity, it is capped at a 76% barrier. So despite the fact that the barrier generation gem is in place, it's not giving you an increased barrier because it's capped at 76%, which means it cannot go over 76%, right? So let's try something else. Let's try something that's not tied to a specific percentage so let's grab um i don't know earthen bulwark let's see if earthen bulwark is is affected by that number so 50 percent of my base life so let's just go ahead and tap the button so we are looking at 1314 without the barrier generation and we take the temerity pants and put those on we gotta wait for the cooldown of course One thousand three hundred eighty. So as you can see, the barrier generation is actually working. It's giving us something, like in certain situations, but it's also important to note that it doesn't always give us what we're looking for. Um, so one thousand three hundred fourteen. Let's actually run the numbers and see if it's actually giving us the correct amount. So plus five percent, right? So 1,379.7 is what it should be, which is probably 1,380. Um, let's go ahead and put that back on. 1,380. So it rounded up, just like I said. So 1,380. So as you can see, the barrier generation from these gems does work, but it doesn't work with all barriers, which is really strange. Um, Temerity Pants, in particular, don't get any effect from the barrier gems, and they don't get any effect from the rubies either, which is silly. Um, I'm not sure if I covered that, uh, but let's go ahead and cover that really quickly just to make sure. So rubies don't affect most barriers, right? Okay, I, did, I do have it up here. So maximum HP doesn't affect most barriers. Um, number three, barrier generation doesn't affect some barriers, which is really weird. 
Um, not all barriers. There are barriers that work, obviously, as we just tested and we just showed, is that Earthen Bulwark is affected by the barrier generation. However, the Temerity itself is not. Um, which means that, uh, unfortunately, Temerities are just really bad pants. Um, I hate to say this, because I know some people probably like these pants, and you may have even come to this video thinking, Oh man, I got these Temerity pants, let's see how good this barrier is. And the moral of the story is, unfortunately, that Temerity Barrier is absolutely garbage. Not only does it uh, only give you 80%, even if you have a perfect version, it can't be improved in any way. And you miss out on your amazing defensive mechanics in the... The pants. The pants defensive mechanics. This is a big thing. So, so far we have barrier seems to snap not snapshot your damage reduction. Maximum HP doesn't affect most barriers. Barrier generation doesn't affect some barriers. Um, and then on top of this, um, we also have some other issues. So, barrier, because it scales to your HP, never really goes above your maximum HP. So, barriers can't really ever exceed your maximum HP because it is based off of your maximum HP or let's actually let's actually correct this based off of your base HP um, now there are some abilities within the game some specifically that have higher percentages I have seen some barriers that say things like 120 percent of your life um, however, of course, as we know, this is of your base life, not of your actual bonus life. Um, and um, the other issue with this is that um, if, even if it does exceed your maximum life, um, you can't really have multiple instances of barriers. Um, I'm not really sure if like you can actually have multiple barriers at the same time. Let's go. Let's go test this real quick. I don't know think I've ever actually tried to do two barriers at the same time. We need uh, we need the temerity pants. So I'm gonna basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the potion to heal myself, and then I'm gonna use the earthen bulwark, and we're gonna add the two numbers together, and we're gonna see if they match up. Um, that way we'll know whether or not we have a double barrier or whether or not we're just looking at a single barrier. Now while we're doing this, uh, let's talk about another topic, which is temporary HP. So in many situations. Um, raising your HP to a very high level um, is going to give you what is known as temporary HP um, because temporary HP is the same as regular HP. Um, it should always be viewed this way for the most part because if you can maintain temporary HP all the time, then temporary HP just simply becomes regular HP. It's uh, There's really not a big deal with it. All right, so let's, uh, let's test this real quick. We got our temerity on. Let's go ahead and tap the temerity, which is going to give us the 2017. Um, we're going to do that two times, just to be sure. Then we're going to tap the earthen bulwark, and we are at 2654. So 2654 is what we were at. And I do believe that matches up with the maximum life that our character has. Um, it's kind of hard to get an idea of exactly what our maximum life is, especially when we're running various things that are increasing our maximum life. Um, but what I could do real quick is just remove these maximum life modifiers just to make sure that we are sitting at the the bonus. So, no, I can't even remove these, can I? No, so we got, what, four, two, we got... Say we got eight percent right there. Um, it's kind of hard to get like the actual maximum life number. Hmm. I'm kind of curious whether that's uh, that's the exact maximum life that I have. I mean, if we were to take away a couple percentages from this, would that equal the same amount? Because what I noticed basically is that we triggered our first one, which is Earthen Bulwark, right? Earthen Bulwark gives us a 1,380. Um, I'll pull the calculator. Why don't I close the calculator? Sometimes I do that, and I'm just, I don't even know why. The 1,380, and we know for a fact that the um, Temerity gives us a 2,017, which should uh, technically be 3,397 barrier, right? So here we have our HP, and then we have our barrier. So we're going to cast both barriers at the same time. We've got our 2017, and then we trigger our others, and it only goes to 2,654. So 2,654 
um, is 743 less than what it should be. Which indicates that, yes, barriers do stack, but it looks like barriers only stack up to your maximum HP. That's pretty much what I would assume here. Because if I take my maximum HP, which is currently 2,872, 2,872, um, and I subtract about, what was that, like 8% from it? Um, we're sitting at 2,642 which is pretty darn close to the number that we were getting for our maximum barrier. So we are definitely looking at a case where the barriers don't seem to stack beyond your maximum life. So we can write that down here. Um, actually, look, I already did. Barriers can't really exceed your maximum HP. Um, and uh, we can put a, little, put a little period there. And then we can also go, because it is based off of your base HP, right? So if we do end up with a barrier that's higher than our HP, it's probably a special mechanic, right? So covering temporary HP, the same as regular HP, um, how it works is basically like this. If I'm fighting a boss, and I know I've used this example many times throughout the video series, if I'm fighting a boss that does 100,000 damage, right? And I have 85% um, you know, damage reduction, which means that I'm only taking uh, you know, 15,000 damage, um, but I only have 10,000 HP. Um, however, I can make a barrier for 10,000 HP. Then I have an effective life of 20,000, right? So whenever this barrier is active, especially if I can keep it up all the time, depending on your character, you may be able to keep the barrier up all the time. I'm going to have a 20,000 HP effectiveness, which means when the boss comes to hit me and he comes to donk me on the head with his big giant ability, he's going to dish out... 15,000 damage to me, which is going to take 10,000 away from the barrier and 5,000 away from my life, and I'm going to be left with a total of 5,000 life. Um, this is good because obviously the barrier acts as a defense against getting one shot. Temporary HP, regular HP, it doesn't really even matter. If you can maintain the temporary HP, then the temporary HP becomes effectively your maximum HP. Now, how can you increase the barrier generation? As we discussed, you can utilize the barrier generation mechanic, which is actually pretty interesting. However, as noted, it doesn't work with some barriers. So you may need to test your specific barrier. Like if you're utilizing a barrier on your particular character, I would advise that you put the gems in, check it, take the gems out, check it, and actually subtract the numbers and make sure you're actually getting a bonus because this is important. Um, another thing to consider when it comes to barrier generation gems is that barrier generation gems are essentially giving you about the same amount that you'd probably get to your regular HP anyway. So let's talk about this for a second. So, so if I go outside of town right now and uh, I take my barrier generation off um, and I cast my Earthen Bulwark, I am going to get, um, I think it was 110 added to my barrier, right? So we look at our barrier. We've got uh, Earthen Bulwark gives you, you know, 50% of your base life, right? So I cast it. I've got a 1,314 barrier, which is immediately casted to my character. Um, 1,314. Let's just write that in the calculator. That I closed again like an idiot. Why do I always close it? Um, I believe this one actually says it on the tooltip. 1,313, even though it gives 1,314, which means it must be rounding up. So we put the pants on, and let's see if the tooltip changes. So the tooltip does not change with the barrier generation, which means the tooltip is basically wrong. Um, so we're going to cast it again, and now we're at 1,380, right? So minus 1,380, which gives us an increase of 66, which isn't too amazing. A ruby, on the other hand, if we put a ruby in our uh, equipment, which I don't happen to have a ruby on me right now, um, rubies are going to give you more life than that, depending on uh, what your, ma your base life is. So the rubies are modifying your base life, and they're also modifying other base life increases, which means you're getting a different effect, right? So if we take our life that we have right now, which is 3,410, um, and then we take a ruby and we throw that in our piece of equipment, we're going to go from 3,410 to 3,525. So 3,525. Notice we gained 115. So the rubies, while they are not affecting the barrier, 
are giving HP, just the same way that the barrier is giving HP, because technically they're both HP. One is HP, and one is temporary HP. The rubies, on the other hand, are giving more temporary, more regular HP, and the barrier, you know, gems are giving more barrier HP, temporary HP. Now, if you can cast your barrier all the time, this effectively becomes sustain. So this is a, a whole other category, and I went over this in a different video. But sustain is basically the process by which you can heal yourself. For more than you are damaged, okay? So because you can generate your barrier on a regular basis, having a larger barrier that you can generate doesn't necessarily, you know, mean... A, a, it's not exactly a bad thing, considering the difference between the rubies and the barrier. Yes, the rubies are giving you more base HP, but the problem is, is that base HP is gone in a matter of seconds and never returns unless you heal yourself. The barrier, however, is going to be generated on a regular basis, um, which makes the barrier basically a form of sustain. Because you're generating the barrier all the time, it essentially protects your HP, which isn't necessarily healing, but it does absorb the damage which is coming in and causes you to take less. So the bigger the barrier is that you can generate on a regular basis, the less damage that you have to your HP, and the easier it is to heal yourself and to sustain. This is a whole nother category when it comes to barriers. Now, one of the biggest issues with barriers, though, is that... Um, a lot of the times people can't generate them on a regular basis. Um, if you can't generate your barriers on a regular basis, then they're not going to be there for you all the time when you need them. A lot of the times, like for instance with Earthen Bulwark, it's on a 16 second cooldown, and you can cast it, uh, you know, obviously every single time it's up, you get that nice little barrier during that duration, but it's not going to give you like a permanent HP bonus unless you're running that really crazy, like I can spam Earthen Bulwark set up which is kind of nuts um and that one is that one is pretty interesting to be honest but uh, but it is also kind of like um i'm not really quite sure what the term is a strange like in the way that it functions because you have to basically just spam it all the time to get that particular bonus it's a it's a whole build that revolves around basically the creation of barriers and um and dishing out damage like when the barrier uh, disappears or something like that. I can't remember exactly the specifics. I've seen a couple people playing it, and it's uh, and it's kind of neat. Um, and that's another point that we need to talk about when it comes to barriers is um, is barriers. There there are lots of effects that buff you. Uh, or let's just let's do this. Increase your damage. Decrease damage taken. and have utility while a barrier is active. So this is something that you also have to take into consideration. There are things within the game that are like, hey, you know, if you have this a barrier active, we're going to give you, you know, like a certain buff. Like as long as you have a barrier active, we're going to give you like additional damage. Um, or as long as you have a barrier active, we're going to give you... Um, you know, like a multiplier. Like this one right here is a 25% multiplier when, you, as long as you have a barrier active. Um, and, um, and these are things that you can add into this equation. So it's not just about temporary HP. It's not just about, um, you know, like the barrier snapshotting your damage reduction or the fact that, you know, any of the stuff that we've gone over before. Because barriers do have downsides and temporary HP does have a downside as well, which is it's not always there. Um, however, usually temporary HP is there when you need it because it's usually something that you create. So whenever you're in danger, you create it. Um, however, these things also make barriers extremely useful. Like being able to increase your damage, being able to decrease damage taken, having a utility while the barrier is active. Um, and there are tons of different ways that you can do this. Um, you can have a huge bonus for those barriers being active on a regular basis. So building a character around barriers isn't necessarily a bad idea. Um, some characters, like the Druid, also have a lot of ways that you can like increase barriers and do all sorts of crazy things. I can't remember exactly where their passives are for barriers. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Where are you, barriers? 
I could have sworn they had at least one or two passives on barriers, but I could be wrong. This one's a pretty nice one, too, right here. Vigilance, which is a 5% damage reduction for 6 seconds after using a defensive skill. Um, obviously, Earthen Bulwark is a, a barrier that they can literally spam on a regular basis. I think most druids, for the most part, use Earthen Bulwark, which is pretty crazy. Uh, it's just a very good barrier that can be spammed repeatedly. And there's really no reason not to freaking use it. I I I don't I don't think I've made a druid yet that doesn't use Earthen Bulwark. I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, they also have a lot of Fortify as well, but Fortify is not the topic of this video. I could have sworn they had something in here which had to do with barrier generation. I guess I am wrong. Hmm. I know they have specific aspects though that are are pretty good for barriers. They have uh, a lot of ways they can increase the duration of their barrier. They have a lot of ways that they can um, cause their barrier to give them extra damage, obviously, as we already demonstrated. And um, this is this is true across most characters, by the way. So, like, um, if you take, like, the Necromancer, the Necromancer has a really one good one called the um, Aspect of the Shielding Storm, which gives a 5% damage barrier every time you hit a target, uh, basically, you know, based off of the base life. Um, the Barbarian has a very interesting one in terms of Iron Skin, which um, gives you a barrier based on your missing life. So the more life you're missing, the more barrier it gives you, which is an interesting temporary HP mechanic, because basically it just replaces all the HP that's missing with a barrier, um, which is actually very effective. And, you know, if you get hit really hard and you have like 1% HP left, and then you tap your Iron Skin, all of a sudden now you have a very nice barrier, which takes up most of that um, missing HP. Uh, it, dep it depends on how many points you put into it, but you do get more or less out of it depending on when you use it. Um, and just in general, I think every character pretty much has some way that they can create a barrier, even if it's just through Temerity Pants, which aren't the best. Um, and, uh, I, I generally rely on the barrier on a lot of these characters to save my life in very dangerous situations. Like when I need to dive into a pack of, like, suppressor explosive poison monsters that are just absolutely terrible. You won't even see me go into the pack without a barrier up. I'll pop my defensive cooldowns, and then I'll pop the barrier, and then I run in there, and I try my best to stay alive for as long as possible, and as soon as the barrier is down and my defensive cooldowns are down, I can GTFO, because it's just not worth the time. Um, so this video has already been going long enough, so let's just do a recap real quick, and then we're going to end it. So number one, uh, barriers seem to snapshot your damage reduction when created. So if you have bad damage reduction, you are going to have a bad barrier, and that barrier is going to disappear very quickly. Number two, maximum HP equipment doesn't affect most barriers. Um, I have not seen any myself personally, but some people keep telling me that there's a couple barriers out there that for some reason are, are actually based on maximum HP, and, um, and I'm just including most in this just simply for them, but it does not seem to affect most barriers. Um, barrier generation doesn't affect some barriers. As I clearly demonstrated in the video, Temerity's barrier is not affected by barrier generation. However, the Earthen Bulwark, which is a barrier, is affected by barrier generation. So take that as it will. I do suggest that you guys test out your barriers to make sure that your barrier generation is actually affecting them. Otherwise, you might be just running a wasted stat. Uh, number four, barriers can't really ever exceed your maximum HP. Um, I demonstrated this by tapping two barriers at the same time, and what we noticed was is that the two barriers that were tapped at the same time could not exceed my maximum HP, and instead were sitting basically at exactly what my maximum base HP was. In fact, you know what? Let's, let's actually write that in here, because I have maximum HP written here. Um... So, cannot exceed your base HP is actually what the truth was there. So, we literally tried to cast multiple barriers at the same time that should have exceeded that number, and we never were able to go above the base HP, which is really kind of strange. Um, and because it's based off of your base HP, that's that's the real issue here. Now, I could have sworn I've seen some barriers that say things like 120% of your base life. And maybe those barriers can go over it. Maybe they're in special mechanics. But as we clearly demonstrated by casting multiple barriers at the same time, there is an issue there. Um, barriers are basically temporary HP, the same as regular HP. 
Um, so whenever you're utilizing a barrier, just think about your barrier as if you're just giving yourself more hit points. It's not some magical force that's like way tankier than the rest of your HP. It is exactly the same tankiness. Exactly the same tankiness as your HP when created. So, and that's kind of the important thing, because if your barrier lasts for 10 seconds and your and your defensive cooldown goes down, then the barrier retains that tankiness for the full 10 seconds, which does seem to be the case. Um, on top of this, um, barriers can be a form of sustain. So if you can spam barriers quickly enough, then you are protecting your main HP, which makes it much easier for you to heal yourself when you are damaged. Um, and there are lots of effects that increase the damage that you can dish out, um, decrease the damage that you take, and also have utility while a barrier is active. Um, these are important. If you're running a barrier, there's no reason why you shouldn't be also running other effects which take advantage of the fact that you're running a barrier. Um, there's really no reason not to. Um, another thing that I don't know if we actually wrote down here is that... Um, uh, let's just go ahead and write this in. Uh, because I feel like we kind of missed it um, as far as like in the actual notes here and I didn't I didn't recover it with the with the recap is um, barrier gems uh, do not affect some barriers so this is also important so some barriers do not get affected by barrier gems and others do um, as we clearly demonstrated the temerity pants are not affected by the barrier gems um, however, the earthen bulwark was affected by the barrier gems, so um, it's really quite interesting. Uh, and I did, I did cover this. I'm an idiot. Don't pay attention to me. I got it right there. It's a lot to cover. Um, if you have any questions, I. We'll definitely answer whatever questions you have. I'll do my best to try and figure out things for you if you have some more complicated, um, you know, problems when it comes to barrier creation. Um, but the general gist of barriers is this. They're good. They're very good. Barriers are very, 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 very nice. Okay. But you do have to have damage reduction on your character to take advantage of the barriers properly. If your character is weak and, and doesn't have good tankiness, then guess what? Your barrier is going to be weak and it's not going to have good tankiness. And adding 10,000 more HP doesn't mean anything when everything one-shots you. And that's really all there is to it. Um... As always, I do appreciate you, you guys and gals watching my videos, even when I spend like 32 minutes ranting about barriers. And uh, as always, keep watching.